Hey, what's up, guys? Tukey here, back again. I'm somewhat frustrated, Tukey24 here, back again with another episode of my new Seattle Mariners franchise mode series right here on MLB The Show 19. The source of my frustration today is that I had already recorded what was to be this episode. Starting the season, we were good to go, we had a fairly good draft, and right after I finished the episode... A new set, a new release of the OSFM rosters come out, and the temptation to restart got the better of me, so here we are. It is an unfortunate turn of events, but I feel like it will be better in the long run, so like Travis Darnold is on Tampa. I don't know if it's the right decision or not because of that little extra source of frustration, but it's okay. I will let it go and we will get things underway with today's episode. Now, the first episode was more of a setup episode. I wanted to get your opinion on how we handle this series, whether or not we just go all out to turn this team into a winner, whether or not we have some restrictions, because it's not that difficult to take advantage of the AI in this uh, in franchise mode in this game because of the trade finder. And pretty much overwhelmingly, the opinion was to just turn this team into a winner no matter what. So that is very much the game plan for this series. Now that said, because we restarted, uh, we do need to take a look yet again at the scout contracts. As far as the staff is concerned, this is what we're dealing with. And again, it's not really worth it to us right now financially to sit here and buy out some of these contracts. So we'll wait it out and in due time get those upgrades. As far as the scouting department is concerned, we do have to make sure that we have the best of the best here. And I gotta be honest, with Jim Sewell, we're looking pretty good in the international department. As far as the West is concerned, Jose Huerta, Discovery is a bit low. Diego Blake might be the guy. Diego Blake is the guy. All right, so we're two for two in terms of keeping who we already had. Holy Giovanni Delgado, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Already our chances of having a successful draft just went up tenfold. And in terms of the East here, it's it's tough. I wish Leifer was uh, a little bit better in terms of scouting pitchers. And in general, there's not really an East scout here that I'm all that happy with. We're going to go with Robinson Hernandez. Sorry, Stephen Daly. But that'll be the scouting department set. As far as scouting, now for this episode, I am going to take the slow and steady approach. Normally, for the beginning of a season, we would just sim up to the draft. I'd recap you on what happened thus far, and then we'd go through the draft. But a lot of people are asking me about you know, how I handle scouting. So for this episode, we'll take it slow and steady. So if you don't want to see everything, hey, feel free to skip ahead. Uh, but we're going to go with a slow and steady approach from there. Now, as far as the roster is concerned, because we are going to be taking that all-out approach, when it comes to free agency, I gotta be honest, I think I'm gonna hold off on signing anybody. I want to make it a little bit more difficult than it would be otherwise. I mean, this starting roster, let's be honest, I mean, I believe the real world Mariners just dropped below 500 for the first time this season. But this roster is nowhere near playoff contention. I think we know that. The easy solution in terms of taking a little bit of a step ahead. Hell, Kyle Seeger's not even on the 40, man. We're going to have to fix that. But obviously, we could take a little bit of a step forward rather quickly by taking advantage of the free agent list. By the way, people are saying sign Ichiro now. Technically, he's retired, but for these rosters, Ichiro is listed in double A. So there you go. Ichiro is at least signed. But when it comes to free agency, right, I mean, there's no doubt for a catcher I could sit there and sign Evan Gaddis and probably just move him at the deadline. For a first baseman, I'd say same thing. Bring in Ben Paulson, probably move Edwin at the deadline and be good to go. I am very tempted to sign Tetsuto Yamada, though. Like, very, very tempted. It's tough because part of me is like, okay, let's make it a little bit more difficult for myself by not signing some of these top options on the free agent list. But then the other part of me is like, man, Yamada could be a really sweet player to have, especially if we move on from D. Gordon relatively quickly, especially with how much he's making over the next two years. He could be a pretty damn good player to move on from. Uh, we do also have some prospects. I mean, you know, signing an A prospect off the free agent list immediately 
it, it alleviates some of the early pressure, especially in the draft, to be successful. So it's, it's tough. And not to mention for uh, outfielders, there are some top options that would immediately bump up what we're doing. There are multiple A-grade prospects available to us. And again, another Japanese player, Nubayashi, who could be another decent pickup for us. Could sign Craig Kimbrell and immediately flip him. I gotta be honest, though, I think I want to hold off. It would be nice. That's a nice head start to begin this series. But at the very least, I'm going to stick with the roster that we have and not take that immediate shortcut. But after this, all bets are off. I'm pretty much going to keep the roster the same, heading towards the deadline, and then from there we go for it. But in terms of taking this jump start, I feel like a lot of people probably do it in their series, so I'm going to hold off and doing it with this series. So we are going to stick with this roster that we have here and again it's not ideal it really really isn't i think for the most part we're gonna keep this roster the same with the exception of adding kyle seager to the 40 man and we are gonna bump him up and drop dylan moore down to triple a we'll drop you down to double a and drop this guy down to single Aside from that, we're pretty much good to go. I mean, Braden Bishop, ugh, I think that's the one thing I'd probably prefer to change, is to drop Braden Bishop down to double A, and for the hell of it, we're going to bump up Ichiro to the major league level. We do have a full 40, man. That's unfortunate. You know what? Bishop might have trade value, so it's, it's kind of tough to say I want to bump him off of the 40, man. You know what, if I if I bump that guy down... You know what, I think screw it then. Screw it. Bishop will stay. We'll pretty much keep the roster the same. Ichiro is at least getting a paycheck. So we have that going for us. But at the moment, screw it. I mean, Hunter Strickland's not even on the roster. It's, it's a little bit rough. But with the 40-man pretty much set, it kind of reduces the maneuverability anyway. If I were to sign a lot of those free agents, I would have a ton of trouble setting up this roster especially you know if they were immediately added to the 40 man so it's just for the best right now to keep this the way it is and to just go for it and see what happens so i'll set the lineups in rotation to auto hell i could set the roster itself to full auto it wouldn't be that big of a deal but we are we are pretty much good to go again as far as the starting roster is concerned it is not great in terms of top prospects at least when it comes to our organization, it is not great. And if we have anybody, they're in the 40s here. We have Kellenich, I believe it is, or Kellenich, and uh, Justin Dunn, who's 23 and a 63 overall. He's about 12 overall points away from actually being useful to us. So yeah, that, that hurts just a little bit. But at the very least, like I said, if we're going to be restarting here, we're going to take the approach of going all out. It is honestly for the best for us to not just pillage the free agent list. We'll see what this team is capable of. We'll probably end up selling relatively quickly. But for now, all the pressure is going to be on the draft as we split the first two games against Oakland. So, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to take the slow and steady approach here to the scouting, which again, only to showcase how I handle it. Wouldn't blame me at all for skipping ahead towards the draft because, again, this is normally something that I skip, but a lot of people are wondering, like, oh, okay, with how you with how you scout, how does it, you know, how successful do you feel like you are? Like, how much time do you have to actually scout individual prospects? Stuff like that. So we will uh, we'll handle it this way for this episode and then get back to the way I would normally handle it, like with what we did last year with, like, the Blue Jays and the Reds. That said, let's keep going as Shohei Otani is probably going to crush us. Why? Are, oh, I, I just realized I hit the wrong button there. We're fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. As we'll go to pitcher lefty clutch and see who we have. Already quite a few, uh, quite a few 80s, which is expected, but the ETA is are relatively nice for a lot of them. A lot of closers, which isn't exactly unexpected. Now, for this first year... It's not as if we're going to sit here and focus on getting anybody in particular. The goal for this first year draft is pretty straightforward. <laughs> Just get 
the top prospects that we can, although we are at 500 through eight games. It's not exactly saying much, but it's a little bit better than I expected us to be, I gotta be honest. But like I said, it's it's a little bit rough. It's it's tough to look past, and I might honestly take a look at where some of those players went to see if they even signed. It's tough to turn down that immediate uh, talent, you know, that we could instantly pick up. Uh, let's go completed transactions. Let's go with no free agent signings. So they're all still there. There's already been one minor trade. I mean, you got to figure most teams are already established, so that free agent list is probably going to remain very, very similar, if not exactly the same, throughout the entire season. Nobody can do anything. Had we started in spring training, that would be a little bit different. So we're going to go to catcher, and I'd prefer to go arm strength speed, fielding speed, as Diego Blake finished looking at pitchers, which, hey, good news, Diego. We were done scouting pitchers anyway, so you got that going for you as we will send the next two games here. Ian Miller's back to 100%. We are still at 6-6 six and six on the season. A long, long way to go, though. So all catchers have been discovered in the West already, which is shocking. Uh, Danny Castilla is 22 years old, but he's projected to be ready next year. So we'll take a look at that guy while we continue to scout catchers with the other three. We'll continue to just go auto with the injuries. We're going to be, I don't exactly want to say hands-off, with the roster for this first season, but to be honest, that is kind of the right word for it. Obviously, we are very much focused on trying to blow up this team as soon as we possibly can. You know, unfortunately, as much as it would be nice, for example, to win with, say, Felix on the roster, don't know if we're going to be able to get the team in a position to do that by the time, you know, he's ready to retire. I mean, as it is, he's already in decline, so it's it's a rough spot there. But eventually, damn it, we will turn this team into a winner, I hope. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't the one challenge that is just insurmountable for us. As we'll go fielding speed for infielders as well. So if I'm not mistaken, this will leave us with about... 41 days-ish in terms of time to scout individual players. So we're on a pretty good, pretty good pace overall as the record has absolutely begun to slip. We're at 9 and 13. And we'll go to the outfield now. Let's go arm strength and speed across the board. And again, once we're done with this set, we'll be able to actually start taking a look at some of these prospects, which, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're, we're in the late teens, I think it would be, if, uh, in terms of where we're going to be selecting in this draft. So, still a half-decent chance to get some you know really good talent. It just depends on how deep this draft is. Like I mentioned in the first recording of this, uh, we actually did have a pretty good draft, and it's uh, that's the one negative for me in terms of restarting here with the updated roster, as to, you know, ha having to lose that is not an easy pill to swallow, but hopefully we can top ourselves here. Now, the good thing is uh, we are ready to actually start scouting guys. Hector Trevino will be the first. Uh, Chris Woodson's a waste of time. We'll take a look at this guy. Maybe not a waste of time, but, I mean, he's 22. The earliest he's going to be ready is 26 years old. There are obviously better options to take a look at, including quite a bit of uh, talent out and left. A little bit surprising. So 12 and 17 at this point. Robbie Cruz is looking like he could be a beast. There's a decent amount of outfield talent here, shockingly. Uh, Carmona is barely worth scouting, but I gotta be honest, for me it's like, well, I already hit the button, so screw it, let's keep going. But about two days per player is pretty much all we need to do. Let's take a look at Mathis. I guess we're gonna be scouting out a decent amount of the uh, relievers here. As far as, oh my god. This is, this is actually a relatively rough first round now that I look at it. A lot of talent that's far from Major League ready. As Danish ends up with an injury, but for the most part we're okay. Domingo Santana, torn hamstring, out two to three months. Lovely. Lovely. You know, overall, overall, don't tell me about training. It's on auto, so everything's fine for now. I'm, you know, I think I'm going to go auto for the... Uh, 
for the roster just to let the game handle it. I mean, I'd like to think the AI is not going to be dumb enough to lose anybody to, uh, say, waivers for me, hopefully. I have been wrong before in terms of trusting this game, and indeed that free agent list is pretty much locked, so we'll have competition for those players. Funny enough, though, only three games out. Obviously, we're you know the Astros have played 30 games, but only three games out. That is fairly ridiculous. Now, in terms of scouting, let's uh, let's take a look again here. Steve James, Miguel Guillen, and Dean Frazier. We'll scout those guys out next. Let's see what we got here. We got a win over the Cubs, which is shocking, all things considered. Imagine we talk about how this team is a decent, a decent bit of bit of a way is away from uh, you know being competitive, getting into the playoffs, and then imagine. We make it in year one without making any changes to this roster. Knowing my luck, that is exactly what will happen. We'll buy at the deadline, and then we'll win the friggin' World Series in year one, and this, this series will be over. It would have been mission accomplished at that point. I mean, 17 and 20, it's, it's a hell of a lot better than I was expecting. We'll take a look at Zapata, Hardwick, again, not worth it. Carmona's not worth it, especially if you think for him the ETA went further back. Uh, again, the ETA can change based on scouting, but for now we'll hold off on taking a look at Howard Sargent and Woodson. Chapel is definitely worth taking a look at. It might be Chappelle. It's probably Chappelle. You're missing an E, but we'll go with, we'll go with Chappelle as opposed to Chapel. Chappelle. Dave Emmett Chappelle. Uh, Navarro, and let's go for Escalona. Continue to see if we can get some half-decent talent. So we're a month away from the draft. Overall, I mean, we just got our asses kicked by the Yankees, which I suppose is not that surprising. I, from what I can tell thus far, I mean, this first-year draft talent is going to be a little bit hit or miss. I think we might have to get a little bit lucky in terms of if we are picking in the late teens in the first round. We're going to need to get a little bit lucky in terms of actually having players fall to us at a decent point in the draft. So we'll continue to take a look here. Ah, oh, man, I wish that catcher was half decent. Looks like a Pedro Rodriguez. Always a, always a decent name to go for. Smith goes down to a slight injury. We end up winning that series against Boston. So 19-24 and 24 on the year. Let me look at transactions here. I'm a little bit afraid. Uh, so, I mean, they have uh, they have made quite a few options, you know, quite a few moves for us. Quite a few call-ups and send-downs. I am okay with that. Uh, eat your row up to AAA. Way to go, buddy. Uh, we'll, we'll pay attention to the team probably closer to the draft or perhaps a little bit after it, maybe even closer to the All-Star break. I think this episode is going to be more so about getting through this first year draft. Let's take a look at Burkhardt. We'll take a look at Gonzalez, who looks like he could be an absolute monster. Arturo. And from there, it's tough to say. Like I said, some of this some of the talent here is a little bit disappointing in terms of their age and overall ETAs. We take two games away from Oakland, three games under 500. Not too shabby. Estrada, Ortega, Leahy. And couch, not uh, not a bad option there. Perhaps at second base, if it works out as uh, well as it could, we shall say. For lack of a better term, it's weird. I'm, I'm feeling that extra sense of pressure to do really well in this draft after the whole restart. I'm I'm honestly a little bit disappointed that I can't sit there and pick up a lot of those guys off the free agent list because imagine now that we had say you know we decide for sure we're selling towards the deadline. Imagine having Kimbrell, being able to flip him for a half decent prospect. I mean, that would be that would be the pretty big step forward that we'd need to make, especially without the limitations uh, that we, you know, aren't currently suffering from. Uh, so we'll take a look at Brisewaugh. 22, ready next year. Might not be too bad. So for 17 days, out from the draft, a double-A ball player just broke his foot. So we win back-to-back -back games, just two games under 500, five games back at the Strohs. Things could go relatively well for us. Uh, let's see what we have here. Snarrows isn't worth it. Let's keep looking at Gabe a little, get him to a, a green bar. 
And from here, woof, that's... It's not looking good. Rob Nam is the first guy I'd look at. Norman Hinton. And is there anybody else in the 80s worth looking at? Let's get a full report on Dean Frazier, even though he's a reliever, and I have my doubts as to whether or not he'll make it to the second round where we'd prefer to pick him. Uh, let's see. Again, uh, Pena's worth taking a look at, but the 21-year-olds who are four-plus years away, I'll pass, to be honest. I'd rather scout players who could be a bit more of a sure thing than waste time on scouting them just to find out that the ETA didn't change at all. We'll take a look at Carrasco, Thomas Rush, which is a great name, and Francis Ham, an even better name. Potential option is second base. Under two weeks away from this draft, Tim Beckham picks up a slight injury. So we're now six and a half games back of Houston. Uh, Pablo Mateo at first could be pretty damn good indeed. Is there anybody else here for 80 potentials? I'm kind of surprised how many... 80 potential players there are. Of course, there are quite a few that I have no interest in scouting. But normally at this point, I'd be down towards the 75s. It's kind of weird that we're not there yet. Rene Montalvo. It might not be the worst thing in the world either for this draft, even though we're not going to target anybody in particular. Uh, we have discovered just how important starting pitching is uh, through our experience with the Red Series. So maybe that is something. Hopefully... There's a half-decent option available to us uh, whenever we get to pick. Billy Shore we'll take a look at, speaking of starting pitchers. And from there, still not down to the 75s. Pretty crazy. We'll take a look at shortstop Brad Huff. And we'll take a look at Gabe Larkin for sure, another starting pitcher. So overall, not too bad. The draft is in nine days. We have... You know, we have information on a decent amount of, uh, decent amount of guys, pretty much what we could have hoped for and hopefully the AI goes for some of this more questionable talent and gives us the chance I think the ideal situation would be say we have three options that we're looking at in the first round if we end up with two out of three because players like Woodson and Park are selected by the AI that would be tremendous so again we won't be taking a look at any of those guys uh, we will continue to look at Gabe Larkin Manuel Cairo as well and still with the 80s. That is crazy how much high-end talent is apparently in this draft. Uh, we have Dan Harms. Hell of a name. I don't think I've ever seen that surname before in this game. And Glenn Rodriguez, who's apparently going to be ready next year. That is my type of player. We are a week out from the draft. We keep winning as well. We're now one game over 500. Look out. Seven games back of the Astros, but second in the division. Not what I would have expected whatsoever without making any changes to this roster to kick things off here. As we'll continue to look, uh, Bob Tejada, we're definitely going to want green bar info on. Is there anybody else here? Cisneros isn't worth it. This dude is definitely worth looking at, as is this guy. He's 22, but he's going to be ready next year. Same for Perry Bloomquist. The Bloomquist. We continue to play the Angels, a loss there, and a win there, four-game series. We'll see if we can take it, as Bob Tejada could indeed be one hell of an option. Not that I'm really in the market to take a closer in the first round. Oftentimes, decent enough closers fall to the second or third round. But we'll see what else we have here. Marco Villarreal. Not too shabby. Anybody else? Burdick, unfortunately, not quite there. Nakayama. Man, how many 80 potentials are there? This, again, has the potential to be a just a simply outrageous draft to start off this series. It's honestly looking better than the other draft I went through earlier today. As we are three games over, the draft is in one day, so we have a chance to scout out a couple more players here before we go into the draft. And are there any other 80 potential options? Nakayama, we want a full report on for sure. Uh, those guys, again, not really worth it. Chavez is going to be ready next year. Fernandez, I'm going to hold off on unless, you know, there's no other better options. And then immediately we find Jack Lawrence. And that brings us down to the 75s. And we're going to take a look at Mark Brenner, 
the second baseman. So let's uh, let's do it. Well, here, let's take a look at how we're doing. So we're six games back of the Astros at 33 and 30, three and a half games back in the wild card at this point. In terms of batting average right now, it's Castellanos who's leading the way. Tim Beckham is up there, though, which is shocking. I mean, he's a 71 overall. And he's up there for the batting average. Oh, trying to fight off the cough and also laugh at the same time because it's it's simply outrageous. Edwin Encarnacion tied with Nelson Cruz for the AL lead in home runs. What year is it? Nobody knows. RBI leader right now, Altuve and Andujar. Uh, Encarnacion's having a damn good year, which is good news for us if we want to move on from him. D. Gordon leading the way in terms of steals on bases. Jose Ramirez at a 420 blaze. It's... Uh, you also have Encarnacion and Beckham. I can't believe Tim Beckham is doing as well as he is. Wins leader. Wade LeBlanc up there with six. Not too bad. 11 already for Kluber. Save leader. Swarzak. Not bad. Sole possession of third place. And then ERA. I mean, Marco Gonzalez. Good lord. Staying neck and neck with Corey Kluber in that regard. Jesus. That is not what I expected to see. At all. Wade LeBlanc's up there, too. You know, I guess maybe it's not that surprising that we are where we are in the standings. We have gotten some decent pitching. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And batting War. Encarnacion is up there as well. Pretty damn good. Now, I do want to just double check yet again that nothing was, uh, nothing, you know, went down with the roster or anything. And for the most part, it's just promotions and. Demotions, so that's pretty damn good. Right now, Kikuchi is meh. Gonzalez is killing it. Leak is a bit meh. LeBlanc's killing it. And Felix has been okay. I mean, granted, anything, you know, anything under a four looks to be relatively decent. So, I mean, you know, for Kikuchi, for Leak, <laughs> leaves a bit to be desired. Felix, it's been okay. Uh, Brandon Brennan right now is our long reliever, the 27-year-old. And Swarzak as the closer. As far as the lineup is concerned, D. Gordon hitting 226. What's the on base, buddy? 275. Yeah, no, you should not be in that leadoff roll. Just because you have the speed, that doesn't mean shit. Uh, Smith hitting 266. Hanger at 235, 11 home runs. And then again, Edwin, 308 average, 16 home runs. Pretty damn good. Jay Bruce, I mean, when you hit the ball, you do well, but it, you don't hit the ball that often, do you? Ryan Healy's having a decent season. Navarro has been okay. Dylan Moore, that's not too bad, I suppose. Again, Tim Beckham has been great. Uh, Bishop, not too bad. Either. I mean, we we are no doubt about it overperforming right now in certain regards. I mean, you can look at the lineup, you can look at the overalls that we have on the bench. Uh, this team is overperforming right now to be three games above 500. Odds are we still look to blow it up a little bit once we are near the deadline. For now, though, we get to focus on the draft. Let's do this. Where are we selecting 19th? So, indeed, the end of the teens. Let's see how this goes down. Pressure mainly on myself here because I know, again, that first draft I did was pretty solid. There is pressure to deliver yet again. We start off with Charlton. Car would it be? Would it be Car? It wouldn't be Carlton. Would it It'd be Charlton? Charlton Burkhardt. Okay then. Yeah, no, that's that's not what you want to see. Absolutely not. Pena. Oof, that's also pretty rough. He, he's got an arm, but that's about it. All right. Don't know if we're taking a catcher in this draft because that's pretty brutal. Although shout out to Tommy Frank. You have two first names. First baseman. Oh my God. I am going to have to show you guys the draft that I had compared to what this draft is going to be, so at least some people still have confidence in me. Although, Pablo Mateo is a very interesting option. Now, high injury risk, but of course we are playing in the AL, so that helps a little bit. Not someone we want to take in the first round, but he could be very interesting if he's available in the second or third. And of course, we just don't have a lot of player info available. Holy second baseman! Jesus, I guess that's where everybody is. Uh, Chappelle, we're going to avoid. Eloy Estrada. That's pretty nice. 
That's not too bad. He's 20 years old. He's going to be ready next year. I mean, it's not amazing as far as his ability at the plate is concerned. His arm also leaves a little bit to be desired, but that's not too bad. And I'd say right now he is uh, he is probably the uh, the favorite that we've seen thus far. Although that can change in an instant. Francis Ham, ridiculous contact. The only questionable aspects to his game are the power and the arm strength. But I mean, damn, damn Ham. Estrada, again, is a little bit more promise, a little bit more potential, and he's going to be ready next year, allegedly. The only thing is, we don't have a full scouting report on him, but, man, Francis Ham's looking like a bit of a monster. There's also Gabe Little, who could be a decent second to third round pickup, obviously a fielding first option. And from there, obviously, we wouldn't be really thinking of taking anybody here, especially not James Holcomb, that's not going to happen. Brenner has a picture, apparently. Okay. Sure. Escalona. Hello. So, good chance of him being like a 70, 70-ish overall with a D potential. That's not a bad option, though, all things considered. It's tough. It's tough to say who we're going for as of this moment. It's not going to be the man from Taiwan. Shortstop-wise, Brad Huff, absolutely not. Do we have anybody else here? Glenn Rodriguez is a no. Emmett Gross, 22, ready next year. Jesus. A fielding expert. The batting leaves a little bit to be desired. He could be worth it. Villarreal we'd hold off on. Anderson we'd hold off on. Ty Wagner might be a decent late pickup, but not worth here. You know, not worth taking here. And then Simmons. This is not a great draft. Carmen Rodriguez. No, that's that's gonna be a no from me, dog. What about Harvey Halsey? It's it's not bad, but it's not great either. Center field, Hector Trevino. That's again gonna be a no. Just the, the batting leaves a lot to be desired. And Roberto Nieves, that's going to be a no as well. There's a decent chance here that we're taking a, a starting pitcher. I mean, the smart thing might be to take an elite an elite reliever at this point. Uh, but we'll see who we have here. So right now, Alex Nakayama isn't bad, but he isn't great. Uh, the Ks, the walks, the home runs especially... Leave a lot to be desired. He's 18 years old. He's four plus years away. It's going to take him a long time to develop. But in terms of getting a project, he might not be the worst guy to pick up right now. Uh, Perry Bloomquist is 22 and he's three years away. So kind of not exactly eager to select him. Uh, Langford is absolutely a no. And then Gabe Larkin, the walks and the home runs are just way too low. This is a brutal draft. I was thinking that we had some promise here, but right now, this is looking like one of the weaker drafts I think I've ever seen. Reliever-wise, I mean, we could go for Bob Tejada. I mean, the walks and the control are a bit low, obviously. And then Pedro Rodriguez as well. I think it comes down to either taking Alex Nakayama as a project. I mean, six foot five, 18-year-old lefty from Japan. Or... We go for Eloy Estrada, who is apparently going to be ready next year. I think the decision's obvious. We're going to go for the pitcher. We're going to go for Alex Nakayama. We just have to hope he's in the 50s and not the 40s. But it's going to be Nakayama, and I am now a hell of a lot less optimistic about this draft. Especially, too, we're not going to have a ton of information about a lot of these guys. A lot of the guys that we scouted ended up being selected relatively early. So that strategy backfired a little bit. And the good thing is, Rodriguez is still available. Not looking like we're taking a catcher in this draft. Pablo Mateo is still available and is right now my favorite. I think the issue here, though, he's 20 years old. He's four plus years away. Which means the overall is going to be pretty damn low, I would assume. He is basically a guarantee to be a D potential. 
pretty much a guarantee. Unless that ETA changes based off of it being a full report, which it is currently not. So he's, he's definitely a risk pick. There's no mistake about that. I wish we had info about Arturo. Steven James just has speed. Everything else is you know, miles away from being ready. And then there's Chris Escalona, who, again, projected to be ready next year at 20 years old. Very well-rounded. Now, the potential showing up as a 65, but, that, you know, that could change if it was based on a full report. Right now, we're looking at Mateo or Escalona. Shortstop-wise, again, we do have Brad Huff, but at 20 years old, four-plus years away, not, uh, not really feeling it. Emmett Gross is also there, 22 years old, a year away. Obviously a bit more defensive first, but not horrific at the plate. Not great by any stretch of the imagination. Anderson is defense first. Wagner's a little bit more well-rounded. Nick Simmons is an absolute no, as is Dan Harms. Uh, I think we'd still probably be leaning towards Escalona or Mateo. Outfield-wise, again, Carmen Rodriguez, that's, that's going to be a no. Harvey Halsey, that's going to be a no. And in right, Nieves. I'm just, I'm not feeling it at this stage of the draft. So, as far as our options here, we have Luther Lazari, which I think they added in more surnames this year. Can't really be trusted, though, unfortunately. Uh, Aaron Wilkerson, the control and the Ks are a little bit scary, but everything else is relatively promising. 94 mile an hour fastball as well. Uh, Gene Langford. Ah, the K's, the walks, it's it's a little bit rough. Wilkerson right now is probably my favorite. David Nunez. He's at least a little bit more well-rounded, but nothing really jumps out at you. Chad Leahy, the hits in the K's are too low. And Sammy Ortega, I mean... It's weird, the, the scouting accuracy is apparently broken because it says we don't know anything about him, but it's green bar here. So, you know, that's cool. SDS, you know, we, we don't make any changes to franchise mode this year because, well, it's already good enough. Oh, is it? Is it perfect? No, which means you could have made some changes. I digress. I think right now, our best bet to either go for one uh, Pedro Rodriguez. 20 years old, he's going to be ready in two years. As a fastball slider and a sweeping curve. Not too shabby. The K's are also up there. I think we're going to go for Pedro, and then we're going to hope that Mateo or uh, Escalona are still available in the next round. I think that's the best way to go. As crazy as that is. So Pedro Rodriguez, come on down. As Mateo is off the board, holy extra picks. And Escalona just went to Arizona. Damn it. So as far as who we have available to us now, it's a whole bunch of nothing. Chappelle is there. Steve James, who again, just no. All he has is speed. Nick Simmons, absolutely not. Harvey Halsey. Halsey might be the way to go here. I mean, the arm leaves a bit to be desired. Uh, I mean, he's looking like the best option right now because, again, so many guys that we had scouted are already off the board. So, Luther Lazari, which, again, it's it's a little bit weak for him. I think we're going to go for Wilkerson, uh, Wilkerson here. He was, he was one of the better options left. Let's go for another starting pitcher. In Wilkerson, not uh, not exactly what I was expecting with this draft and kind of the complete opposite of what happened with the first run. That first run that will be so fondly remembered by me and only me because I'm the only one who experienced it. It's going to be another starting pitcher here at this rate. Let's take a look at Sammy Ortega. The Ks are just brutal, and again, the scouting accuracy, I don't know if it's freaking broken or what. I don't know which one to trust. I'm going to trust this menu that we're on right now as opposed to the other one. Uh, let's take a look at Cairo, who isn't that bad. Now, if I could trust it, that would be great. Cairo might be the guy. Rob Nam, no. That's, that's the long reliever special right there. 
And bottom of the barrel, John Cow. John Co. John Cow. It's actually not that bad. It has quite the heater. Ton of velocity. I think. I think, I think. I mean, Ortega, it's just the K's are brutal. Let's, uh... Let's go for Cairo. I mean, this is going to be a very pitching-heavy draft, but that's just the way RNGesus decided it was going to go as far as who was available here. Sammy Ortega is still available, as is John Co. And aside from that, I don't think we have info on anybody else. We don't. So it's down to John Co. or Ortega, which... I mean, Ortega, at least with the half decent velocity. Or John Co. That's a tough call. I'm going to go for Ortega. He's a bit more of a safe bet. Maybe John Co. Nope, he's off the board. I didn't see who he went to, but I did see his name. So our sixth round pick here is going to be a complete toss up based on ETA. It's either going to be Ayers or Avila. Or the Avila. Or Dudley Barton. Thomas Pepper. Great name. I think it's uh, it's got to be the 18-year-old with the higher ETA, and we got to hope for the best. So, Reed, I think congratulations, buddy. Another pitcher. Not at all what I was expecting or how I was expecting this draft to go, or really this first episode after the restart with, of course, the free agent list not really being able to be utilized. Let's see how we did at the very least. You know... Considering it's a draft where we took nothing but pitchers, this could be promising. Alex Nakayama is a 60 overall at 18 years old with 85B potential. That's not bad. I thought he was going to be like 20 points weaker. He's like, you know, 15 overall points away from being MLB ready. He's no doubt going to make an impact at the major league level. Pedro Rodriguez as well, about 6 overall points away from being called up. 20 years old, A potential, absolute monster. Wilkerson... 21 and a 63 with 79 C potential. He probably doesn't have too much of a you know too much of a future with the team. However, we get an absolute steal with Miguel Cairo, 66 overall at 19 years old, 84 B potential. No doubt Nakayama and Cairo will be a part of the starting rotation at some point down the road. Ortega and Ayers were both terrible, but we get two pitchers who are guaranteed to be starters for us in the future, barring a brutal collapse of their progression. And we get Pedro Rodriguez as well, who could be a future closer, at least a dominant part of the bullpen moving forward. That said, let's take a quick look elsewhere. If you see a player name that you uh, want me to look at in particular that I don't talk about, let me know down in the comments. But like Art Barreto, 69 overall, 21 years old, he's going to be great. Rough draft for Houston. Nobody above a C potential. Atlanta gets, ooh, Francis Ham. Francis Ham. Oh, that's tough. I think I like the decision to go for Nakayama more, but Francis Ham would have been a pretty damn good pickup. He's going to be almost major league ready next year. I mean, again, the arm, the power, a little bit concerning, B potential, but pretty damn good. Nishii is going to take forever to develop if he ever does. That's a pretty bad pick. I mean, again, we're talking about someone being 25 to 30 overall points away from being useful at a major league level at 21 years old. Good luck with that. Uh, the Marlins, Debrew, Debrew, 21 years old, 49 overall. Again, same thing. Good luck. It's going to take him forever to develop. So a lot of these teams, Edgar Chavez would have been a really good pickup for us late. A lot of these teams did end up taking guys like that that I try to avoid like the plague it's just, you know, we couldn't really find that much luck. We did pretty well, uh, all things considered, for this draft. Again, John Gibbs, good luck getting him to develop. Felton's a decent pickup. Uh, Damian Fegan is going to take forever to develop. So, yeah, this was a brutal draft. All things considered, Luis Becerra, 20 years old, 22. Like Again, I don't call anybody up until they're like a 75. I mean, he would take forever to develop if he ever does. Langford at least has the advantage of being 18 years old. Then they get a 96 potential guy who's 22 and a 51. Good luck with that. I mean, the only thing you really get there is trade value. 
if you're me, because the AI is dumb enough to be like, oh my god, 96 potential, I want that. So, you know, pretty rough draft there for the Cubs. Uh, Leslie Leary, not bad. Again, 20 overall points to go, but he's 18. He has time. Brad Huff, though, at 20 years old, you got 30 overall points to go. Good luck with that. Steve James, again, long road, long development time for him. Uh, Rich Stevenson, not too bad, I guess, for V potential, long development time. Same thing for these two, long development time. Robbie Cruz, decent, should eventually make it, but might not. Harrison Dowdy, I mean, you get the point, right? Especially if you've, uh, especially if you've seen a series of mine before, you kind of know my opinion about certain prospects, where it's like, oh my God, look at the potential. It's like, yeah, but look at the overall and their age. Good luck, you know. However, uh, Vladimir Batista, that is a steal and a half for Arizona. Uh, they also ended up with Gabe Larkin, who uh, actually didn't end up being as good as I thought he would. Escalona, I was right, I think. I think he was the one I said that about in terms of high overall, but kind of low potential. That was indeed the case. Colorado, whether or not BD ever develops, time will tell. Same for Nieves. Uh, the Dodgers get Eloy Estrada, who again, only about 11 overall points away at 20 years old. He should eventually make it, but will he turn into like a 90, you know, like a high 80s to 90 overall superstar? I have my doubts. Leahy's not too bad. Probably could have picked him up. Rosado, again, long development time. I mean, you can't fault the Padres. They got some prospects where if, man, you know, if they develop, they're going to be looking very good. It's just a pretty big if as to whether or not they're going to develop. Jesus H. Christmas. Well, congrats to the Giants on getting the next Mike Trout. 19 years old, a 72 with 98A potential. Good Lord. John Patton. I don't believe I had the chance to draft him. Bob Tejada is also pretty damn good. As is Esslinger, and Riley's going to take forever. Those top three picks, man, for the Giants. Their turnaround is going to happen sooner rather than later. Josh Bennett's 18, so, you know, at least considering he's going to go up 30 overall points, he at least has the time to do so. Alexis Pena as well, who we were tempted to draft. Going to have a decent amount of development time ahead of him. And Mullins, I mean, 22, but at least the overall isn't abysmal. Red Sox with Valido, Reed Glass... Let's see, D'Angelo Bloom and Chappelle, kind of meh. Muller's pretty damn good. Nam is also pretty damn good. Not a bad draft for the Yankees. As we'll uh, just go ahead and take a look at the remaining B potentials. Could be an interesting pickup there for the Blue Jays. 20 years old and 64. He's certainly going to have a major league career. Brady Pringle, maybe the best name in the draft. It's close. There were some decent names, but... Brady Pringle might be tops there. Detroit, Jose Lopez should end up being pretty damn decent. Kansas City with Joe David, yeah, he should still end up making it. Tim Ruiz, not too bad for the Twins. Nick Simmons going to take a while to get there. The Angels with Frazier, Ortiz, Rodriguez, Castilla, and Flores. Oakland with Little, Burkhart, 93 potential, but it's going to take a long time to develop if he ever does, and that brings us back home. So obviously, uh, we will be signing Nakayama to his first contract. We will be signing one Pedro Rodriguez. Wilkerson will also get a contract, as will Cairo. The other two, uh, for obvious reasons, will be dropped. Ayers isn't too bad. Might actually end up signing him later on to help fill out the roster, but for the most part, he is gone. So with that, I think we are pretty much done here for today, despite the fact that we are only six games back, and in terms of the wild card, just three and a half games back. We are very likely at the deadline to make quite a few moves. Again, the All-Star game is coming up. Deadline day, of course, on the 31st. Probably right after the All-Star game is when we will look to make moves, because let's face it, I mean, we could add to this roster, but there's really no point. I mean, I can't imagine us winning a series, no disrespect, with Omar Navias at catcher. It's just, it's not quite there. Edwin, I mean, he's 36 years old. We have to get rid of him now before he regresses, not to mention his contract is up at the end of this year. We also talked about whether or not I have the ability to get rid of a Daniel Vogelbach or an Evan White, who are likely to take forever to develop. White is a little, obviously more likely than Vogelbach, but 
there are players that we are probably going to want to move on from. D. Gordon, again, could be one of those players. 13 million bucks isn't too bad, but at 30 years old, you have to start wondering when the regression is going to kick in. Kyle Seeger, same thing. We could get a decent return for him. I mean, with Ryan Healy and Dylan Moore, could get decent returns for them, to be honest. Shed Long, perfect guy to trade. J.P. Crawford, perfect guy to trade with that A potential to try and make the most of it at this point. Uh, there are a lot of moves that we could make, a lot of pieces, Braden Bishop, uh, that we could look to move to get something back for just to tear down this roster and rebuild from there. Because again, so many so many of our top players right now are at a pretty dangerous age. And Carnacion, obviously, D. Gordon's, you know, D. Gordon, Seeger, Leak, Felix, you know, this isn't the type of team that you necessarily try to add to because of how crazy regression can be. I mean, Felix, right now, I imagine, is boosted on morale. Yeah, he's a 75. Like, he's going to drop even more. This isn't the type of team where it's like, yeah, let's let's go ahead and give up players. Like, no. I mean, we'll give up players for the sake of getting back players who are ready now. Like, that is just not the way to go. I mean, the obvious way to go, you use Edwin, you use Vogelbach, we look at prospects. It doesn't even necessarily have to just be prospects, but I mean, Esteban Florial from the Yankees, that could be a uh, that could be a decent little pickup. That's actually the only trade that we managed to get uh, for Encarnacion, which isn't surprising with how much money uh, he is making. But again, if you add somebody like uh, Dylan Moore to the deal, maybe if we even take out Encarnacion, I'm not going to do any trades here. But for example, we move on from these two guys, we can get a Yusnel Diaz, which is Fairly outrageous. Outrageous. We can get a Shane Baz, which is just not a smart move on the AI's part whatsoever. <laughs> Case in point, of course, with this system, it's so easily exploitable. But that's why I left it up to you guys as far as what we look to do. You said, screw it, exploit it, just win, baby. And that is what we are going to look to do. So the next episode is when we will finally start to begin to put our own spin on this roster and the good thing is if we make certain moves at a certain time uh, there are still options on the free agent list that we could look to pick up to help fill out the roster the first year draft relatively decent feeling pretty good about it hopefully next year we can pick up some position players it's a start damn it not sure how i feel about the episode because i keep thinking man maybe i forgot to say something but that's what happened i think overall though it was worth restarting uh, with that roster update and of course as we try to make the most of it i think it was the way to go though so i hope you did enjoy the episode if you did you know the deal leave a like on the video otherwise i'll threaten you with physical violence which is apparently the best way to get likes on youtube nowadays aside from that i think we are good to go thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one until then have a good one and goodbye